Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Chris here, uh, sitting in the backyard. Uh, beautiful, beautiful day out, a little cool, kind of overcast, but I'm in the gazebo. Um, just, uh, just, a, just a nice evening here, just to sit around, had, just had supper. And um, I thought I'd come out and do uh, a whiskey review here for you guys. Um, yeah, it's just uh, just a beautiful day, a beautiful night, it's starting to get fall, and um, well, yeah, you got the birds here singing, you got Earl the Squirrel, oh, you got a little red squirrel, my neighbors uh, calls him Earl, so Earl the Squirrel, he's been running around demanding peanuts from me here, so he's he's got some stuff here beside me over there, so hopefully he leaves me alone, the birds are squeaking away uh, with their sunflower seeds, and uh, the blue jays and the crows have not come to bug me uh, yet. Um, they bang on my window, they follow me around the yard, and they scream at me uh, because they want peanuts. And I put a little dish of peanuts out when the peanuts are, are done. Little arseholes, they flip the, flip the little uh, dish upside down just to let me know that uh, they need more. And uh, if I'm out for a walk in the neighborhood, they see me and they follow me all over the place. So it's kind of cool, but um, it, if I was to let them push me around as much as they already are, I'd probably be broke because all I'd be doing is buying them peanuts because they will ravage a bowl of peanuts within like a minute. And and they'll be like, my neighbors, I was talking to them today and we had like 40 crows in the yard the other day. Came back from my walk, they all followed me. They're all waiting there, waiting patiently or as patiently as a crow can wait. They're all over the yard and the house and they all wanted their peanuts. So I had to go in and put a bag of peanuts out for them and they went absolutely nuts. So neighbors are gonna, probably gonna think our house is haunted. Uh, which would be kind of cool for Halloween. But um, anyway, what we are talking about here today, the scotch, this is a Highland Park scotch uh, right out of Orkney. And Orkney is the highest island in, in Scotland and is right across the water from Norway and Denmark. And uh, in the eighth, uh, the ninth century, the Vikings decided, oh, let's go out for a little adventure and let's go see what we can find. Um, so they're gonna go and conquer some more lands. So they came over, and right away they ran into Orkney because Orkney is like 20 miles maybe from from Denmark and uh, and Norway so away they came and they invaded and they they ruled uh, and uh, uh, Orkney from uh, uh, year 800 to 1498 I believe it was uh, but they settled in they became craftsmen and farmers and uh, they traded and uh, really became a, a part of the uh, part of that island and it's a very Viking island. And to this day, uh, a lot of the Arcadians, one in three, I believe, have Viking DNA to it. So it's it's really really cool island. Um, it's it's as high as the Arctic Circle. And I used to live up in the Arctic Circle. I used to be a, a medevac pilot up there. So I lived all over like Pond Inlet, Resolute Bay, I've been to Gluluk, and uh, I lived in. Um, uh, Callowit, Yellowknife, places like that. Yellowknife was like. Florida to Winnipeg, you know, like Winnipeg's here and Florida all the way down here. Well, where I lived, Resolute Bay was here and Yellowknife was all the way down here. So Yellowknife was kind of like Florida to Resolute Bay. We're basically right up at the North Pole. We're pretty darn close to it anyway. But that's where Orkney sits. They sit up in the Arctic Circle. And uh, they get some crazy ass winds blowing through there, like 100 mile an hour winds. And uh, it just ravages the land and no trees grow, just like in the Arctic. Uh, but what they do get is some really cool peat. And because there's no wood in it, because there's no trees, it gets really, really, really dense. And there's none of that uh, tree or wood influence in their peat. So it's a very different taste in their peat. And you gotta try it. It's absolutely amazing, amazing uh, scotch what these guys are producing. Um, and for the last uh, 200 years, I believe, uh, 1798 is when they kind of started uh, up until now, they've been making their scotch whiskey with 4,000 year old peat. It's it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, you gotta go check it out. And I believe the uh, the Orkney princess at one time was married to a, a Danish prince. So very, very Viking um, uh, settlement and island. And uh, kind of close to my heart because my family is from Denmark. So we're all Vikings. My, my grandfather came here and uh, in uh, the early 1900s to, to Canada and settled here from Denmark and uh, kind of close to Copenhagen. I believe the town was called Hazlitt. Uh, his name was uh, Christian Erland, ha uh, well, 
loves Peterson uh, before he came, um, but um, changed his name because Peterson was like Smith, and, and uh, so he wanted something different, so he changed his name to the town he was from. But, uh, so, yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting. But anyway, uh, I, I definitely want to get over to, um, to Denmark someday and, and, uh, and see, where, see where my family comes from. But today we are looking at the Highland Park Vault Nut. This won uh, uh, multiple gold awards in the 2019 Spirits uh, competition in San, San Francisco. And um, this is the number two in the series. First there was the Valkyrie, then the Valk Knot, and then the Valk Father. I have the Valk Knot, and I have the Valk Father, but I don't have the Valkyrie. So if anybody out there knows how I can get a Valkyrie, uh, please let me know. I would absolutely love to get one for my collection. Um, uh, the, the Valk Father, I have not tried because I only have one of it, but I did manage to get two of these, so that's the reason why one of these is open and I'm really happy I opened it. It's uh, 46.3%, um, so a little higher than the 12-year-old. Um, the and um, this is an absolutely amazing scotch. I absolutely love it. And there's a guy named Jim Ling Lingenwald, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He's from Denmark. And his, like, 30th generations ago, he was the first Earl of Orkney. So he did all the artwork on here. And the Vault Knot is a... A ruin that the um, it basically means the um, uh, life on earth to life in heaven. So it's the transition from from your earthly uh, body or realm to the heavenly realm, and uh, and the Vikings would would wear would wear these tattoos. So they would go into battle. They have the tattoo on. Uh, they died in battle, and the Valkyries would come down and search out the guys who died this honorable death. So if they had the Valk nut on it, they went to Valhalla. And uh, they partied in Valhalla with Odin and all the gods and everything, and they would be there waiting to be reborn and uh, battle uh, for Ragnarok. So that's kind of the legend behind that. Um, but So let's get into this, uh, into this uh, scotch here. This is absolutely amazing. It's a, a black bottle, so you can't really see what's, what's really in it. Uh, and it has the old um, Highland Park um, bottle crest to it. It just has the HP, whereas the... Um, just one second, I'm just going to grab the 12-year-old. Uh, so imagine the old 12-year-old being clear and like this, just with this. And now this is the new 12 year old with all the Viking ruins on it. So that's the, um, that's the new, new look of the 12. So anyway, um, back to the scotch here. Um, yeah, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, there's no age statement to this one. Like I said, it's 46.3%. And, uh, but lots of like, crazy 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 uh, flavors to this one so has the same locking system as well like you can't pull it up as the 12 year old so you have to unlock it first and then you can pour it and um, I don't believe this one has been chill filtered although I don't see that it says that it has not been colored or chill filtered not on the box, not on the label, but it's 46.3%, so I'm not sure. So, yeah, so this is a, it's kind of really nice, kind of a dark amber goldy look to it. Pour it a little bit more because I'm going to add some water to it. I want to see what it, uh, see what it uh, tastes like with water. I've had it this numerous times. I think the bottle's probably down to about here by now. Um, it's one of my favorites. Absolutely love this stuff had uh, my cousins over um, from uh, St. Thomas, Ontario. My brother was over from uh, Newmarket, Ontario. My other little brother was in from Burnham, BC for my nephew's wedding, and they were sampling this as well, and they absolutely fell in love with the scotch. Um, it's not, it's getting harder to find, and uh, because they came out with that three series, and, uh, and, and a lot of it's now been sold out, but there are some places you can still find it, and some places here in Canada you can still find it. And I don't think the Valkyrie is that hard to find, but for some reason I just can't find it. So if you guys know where I can find a bottle of the Valkyrie, let me know. I would be absolutely 
pleased to get a bottle of that. Um, but uh, yeah, you can definitely smell the, the peat smoke to it. A little bit of honey, but more creamier notes to it. Some vanilla. It's uh, it's it's in three different types of casks. So it's got um, uh, cherry, um, sherry uh, casks, and then it's got um, some uh, European oak and American oak casks that it sits in for uh, during its maturation. That is really good. Very smoky, um, very peaty, has some spice to it. Um, some um, bit of like uh, coffee notes to it, nuts. Um, like I said, some spice, some vanilla. You can definitely taste the vanilla in it from the oak uh, influence, but as well as those dried nuts from the sherry influence. So, um, have really 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 nice and it just pairs really great with this uh with this with the smoky notes to it and that earthy earthy notes from the the peat so and it, it just melds right into the scotch not drying at all really kind of coats the mouth and, and almost salivating uh how good it is it's this is absolutely amazing i just i, I love highland park though I'm very uh um i mean i like all scotch a little not i wouldn't say all scotch but most scotch I like, but I really like the Highland Park and, and a lot of it. I mean, the flavors are absolutely amazing, but I really like the, the, the Viking history behind it as well and, and how they're really promoting that, you know. Uh, I know it's all marketing and stuff, but it is a very Viking island, so I think that's very, very, very cool. And, uh, and they do a lot of different Viking, um, you know, uh, characteristics to it. You know, I, I know back before I got into it, I mean, they had Thor and Loki and, and uh, that kind of stuff. And I would have absolutely loved to get a bottle of those too. You know, I think that'd be really, really, really cool to have as well. But, um, I'm not sure when they came out long before I got, uh, really hardcore into this kind of stuff. So, mm. this is, this is absolutely incredible. This has opened up like crazy. Really, really, really nice scotch. Um, it's probably been open for about eight, nine months, maybe. Something like that. I uh, got it at BSW in Calgary, Alberta. Can't get this here in Winnipeg at all. They had a good deal on it, so I grabbed the bottle. I, you know, I, I had a bottle already, but I wanted to get another one because I really wanted to open it up. And I, I really wanted to uh, to try it out, and I really want to share it with you guys. So uh, again, I'm going to dram out two ounces of this bottle uh, to uh, one of my lucky uh, subscribers, so that you can try it as well. But this is absolutely fantastic. I'll try just a little bit more before I add water to it because it's so good just as it is. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Had a little tiny bit of water to it. It's clouded up a little bit, so not much, but when I put the water in, I could see the scotch mist in it. So it's still fairly clear, but not quite as clear as it was when I added water. So I'm thinking this is probably not chill filtered, but I don't know, it doesn't say anything because normally right on the box or on the on the uh, bottle because they're really proud of the fact that it's not chill filtered not colored and in certain uh, countries like germany um it's it's law if it if it has been you have to mention it if it hasn't been it has to be mentioned so um but in north america it's pretty loose so if it's not mentioned you just assume that it is so but i did have a little bit of scotch mist it's still pretty clear but can't see the camera through this anymore now so it has clouded up a bit so who knows I guess I should smell it before I drink it I'm just it's so good yeah it's um, the uh, 
smokiness is still there, but really, really, really kind of sitting on the back end. What you do smell, though, is like uh, vanilla, cream, toffee, caramel. Um, yeah, stuff like that. The spice is completely gone. It's just gotten thick and creamy, nutty, toasty, caramel, toffee, vanilla, and um, a little bit of leather and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of cigar box. But I think that's the influence from the peat smoke because it's still there sitting in the background. Mm. Damn it, that's so good. That is really, really, really good. Wow. I just love this stuff. Um, appreciate everybody watching. Um, I really do. Oh, uh, before I sign off, I, um, I had one of my viewers uh, the other day made a really good uh, idea uh, to it, so thank you for that. Um, they said, because um, I've been into wine since I was 18. I've been into scotch and whiskey forever as well. I've been studying the sommelier uh, courses and uh, with wine and scotch and cigars so I've got all the books I've been studying I don't know if I'll ever do it or not I'm just doing it uh, learning more about it for my own basic interests because I find it really really interesting and uh, and I help a lot of my clients uh, with this so say you're at a wedding and uh, and I'll ask them you know oh, how was the food today and you know at your wedding and they'll go well you know, when we're not tasting it, it was, it tasted better, you know, but it wasn't bad. And I said, well, what kind of wine did you pair with your food? I don't know, is it red? And I said, well, what'd you have? I had chicken. So you look, and they have had like a heavy cab to the chicken. So they're, they're not pairing their food well. So, um, I, uh, I provide that kind of service. So I'll, I'll help them pair their real wine and food. I'll help pair, you know, scotch and cigars or scotch and food or, or whatever, you know, um, and, and, and how to build upon the palate over the day. Uh, so I help clients with that. I've helped some venues with that. I've helped a couple of hotels with that. Uh, I've uh, assisted in some of the buying uh, processes with some of these venues uh, that I shoot weddings for. So, and I'm always happy to do that. I don't ever charge anything for that as well because it's just fun for me. But, um, so yeah, so I've been into the whole uh, taking, as learning as much as I possibly can. As I'm, I'm always, I'm always wanting to learn, right? And I learn from you guys, uh, and uh, so I'm constantly reading everything I, I can get my hands on. And uh, so I've been studying the Psalm books and uh, and everything and the regions and the t everything. So it's been really, really interesting. But one of my viewers said, "Well, why don't you?" Uh, because you got a bunch of cigars and you're a cigar guy, why don't you tell us what kind of scotch and cigar would go well with that? And I thought, you know, why didn't I think of that? Um, so thank you for that. I mean, it's it's uh, you guys are incredible and you're so smart, and uh, and I really do appreciate that and uh, and and that feedback, and 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 assisting me in helping this channel grow. So I picked out two cigars that I think would probably go fairly well with the Highland Park Balk Balk Nut. Uh, the first one here we've seen before. Uh, this one was in uh, two of the humidors that I sent out to uh, to two of my lucky viewers. And this is the CAO Heritage Robusto. Very, very nice cigar. Uh, really easy smoking. Uh, right out of the Dominican Republic. Um, Hanky Kellner had his hands on this, so anything Hanky Kellner touches is absolutely amazing. This has got a lot of nuts and toast to it, some creamy notes to it. So this would go really, really well with this because there are nutty notes to it and some creamy notes to the scotch, and especially when you add water. So this will go really, really well, I believe, with this with this particular uh, scotch. The other one we haven't seen yet, uh, but we will. And this is the H. Upman 1894, uh, I believe. Anyway, this is from Alec Bradley. Really nice cigar. Really nice, uh, nice. Um, uh, I say it's a robusto, but I think it's more of a Toro sized cigar. Uh, absolutely stunning. Uh, it's got nuts, toast, um, that dark roasted uh, coffee notes to it. Even like um, 
black cherries, but those like those tart black cherries to it, as well as nutty notes to it. So uh, all that I think would really, really, really pair very, very, very well with this scotch. So uh, those are the two cigars. I mean, there's a million cigars out there that you can easily pair this with. I mean, I could probably name off 12 right off the top of my head right now, uh, but I don't want to bore you guys. But uh, so this this one here, uh, well, the H. Upman, uh, A.G. Fernandez, uh, this is out of Honduras, uh, would, would pair really well. And the CAO Heritage Robusto out of the Dominican Republic would really go well with, uh, with this particular scotch as well. So uh, two recommendations, uh, but um, I'm sure there's a lot of cigars out there that would go really, really well with the scotch. And the scotch is just so easy to drink as well. But um, anyway, I really, truly appreciate you guys watching uh, and spending some time with me. Uh, I know time is something that you can never get back, so thank you for that. And uh, please like and subscribe. I'm going to dram out two ounces of this bottle. I'm going to put it into a little box. Uh, once that box is full, I'm going to send that box out to to my lucky uh, 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 that box out to uh, one of my lucky uh, subscribers. So uh, for a chance to win uh, a box of really great samples of Scotch and bourbon and, and whiskey and stuff like that, all you got to do is like and subscribe to this channel. It's pretty easy, and. Um, and I hope you guys got something uh, out of this. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. Have yourself a great day and, uh, and cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.